can go first. Okay, cool. Uh, Introduce ourselves. Hi. Uh, my name is Michael, and I represent Stormy Photography. And I'm here with uh, beautiful people that are going to <laughs> <laughs> that are going to uh, tell you who they are and what they do. So I'll start by Stormy Photography. What it is? Um, Stormy Photography. It's um, it is Stormy Photography, but it has photography as well as videography in it. And it's basically uh, a platform that's evolving. I feel like it's going to be completely different from how it's going to be like in the next five years, mm -hmm. because we learn and yeah. we change. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, we can explain who we are. You wanna go first? Since you okay. Um, I'm Emily. Okay. Um, Cine Mille. Introduce yourself. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm a fourth year film student. Okay. So yeah, I think it's just interesting. Obviously, what you're saying with the with the photography world changing. I think the exact same thing's happening with film. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm Sena Mille. Um, you can call me Sen. I know my name is still forgot. Okay. So I just graduated from filming. I did third year and didn't do advance because um, I wanted to actually experience the industry firsthand and I also like I felt like me continuing with advance wasn't really for the right reasons because I was really scared um, to be there out there in the world and like looking for jobs because mm. so I felt like me continuing with studies would be like a comfort zone where I'm just like sitting uh, and waiting uh, yeah. so yeah I did what I was mostly afraid of which is not continue studying and looking for jobs and it's been tough been tough. And tough. It's been how many months? Two months now. Damn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. that's that's actually interesting because I had the the same dilemma. Like, obviously, the whole of last mm -hmm. year is like fourth year, not fourth year, fourth year, not fourth year. Yeah. And for me, it's a, it's the same thing of like fourth year provided this comfort mm. zone. And in my mind, to kind of justify it, I was just like, you know, like with with the strikes that happened with the with the film industry mm. and with COVID, mm. the industry is like been struggling so much to recover yeah mm. and in my head i was like i don't want to sit around and not work for the year mm. yeah. but i do get you because it is a point where you have to get into the industry yeah. and i feel like taking that leap is is really brave mm. Mm. especially mm. at this time in the industry but i feel like no matter when you're going to take it it's never going to be the right time yeah, yeah i want to ask you something sorry mm -hmm. to interrupt you but i'd like to ask the both of you something mm. um i didn't study photography i'm self-taught so, yeah. and I mainly work, I don't um, work with um, brands, you know, I just work for myself. Mm -hmm. I take people, pictures of people, mm -hmm. as well as pictures of events. Uh, the, a certain aspect of my venture that I'm particularly interested in, it's uh, shooting weddings. I love weddings, you know, those beautiful moments, Stunning. you know, mm -hmm. the kisses, you know, those mm -hmm. things. I like them. I like them so much. <laughs> Bride, <laughs> the dress, all the green. <laughs> Exactly, I like that. So, uh, I'd like to ask you guys: Do you, um, after getting your degree, mm. degrees, how is uh, how how is your, you know, the way you wanna attack or the way you wanna, um, how is your? Because I heard you saying that you you were looking for a job mm -hmm. and everything. So, have you considered like venturing and maybe uh, creating content for your own self mm -hmm. and maybe profiting from that? You know. How how does that relate to uh, how is your venture and how are you planning to venture? Um, so I know content creating is a new thing and being an influencer, but I chose filming for a reason because I don't like to be in the spotlight. So okay. yeah, okay. I think if I would be creating content, I would just need to know like what am I creating content? Mm. What what's my content mm. like? And also, like, what's my target audience? And because I don't have a lot of followers on Instagram, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. it's just like friends and distant people I know uh, from, like, I don't know, when I've somewhere when I go somewhere and I meet them, like, okay, follow me here, yeah, yeah, there. Uh, uh. So, yeah, I would just need to know what to create, uh. and like that thing I'm creating, I'm content I'm creating, is it gonna get me more views? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think to, to add on, yeah, to add on to what you're saying, mm -hmm. I, yeah, I haven't, I've, I've created content, but m not in the, like, personal space. Okay. I do a lot of, like, yeah. editing of, like, you know, re-editing of shows and stuff. You Making edit edits of that, you yes, like shows. that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I've gained decent followings through that of, like, 20,000 on Instagram, oh, stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And I've, I've gained, like, association with brands through that. But I think uh. a big part, at least in film, 
which is yeah. the big thing is working with clients, uh. but that not always being brands in themselves. Mm. Uh, uh, I, but I, it does it does correlate and it does connect. Mm. But it's because the work I'm creating is not always for social media. It's mm. for like a specific project that they're doing or yeah. event that they're doing. So uh, I think yeah, I think it's an important thing to get into that that's content creation. Yeah, yeah, that's that's very interesting. That's very interesting. And I'd like to ask uh, from the both of you guys, uh, for you to get like to work with a brand, you know, do you think, or do you have like a speci specific way that um, you think is very helpful for you that uh, helps you get in contact with uh, working with these brands, you know? Um, just very curious, curious to hear that. <laughs> um, I feel like the quickest way a brand can notice you is followers. Followers is a new thing mm. now. Mm. If you have a lot of mm. followers, then, then they know that they're going to be getting um, those followers to follow, like follow the brand or buy whatever they're selling. Yeah, so yeah. they can't really want to like partnership with you if you're not mm. really gonna give them something in return. Mm. So I feel like that's the difficult part of it, mm. yeah. Yeah, I think to add on to that, definitely, because I mean, the, the, the stuff that I've um, collaborated with brands and stuff and they've sent me stuff, it's always been because I had a following mm. and they were the ones to reach out. Mm. Mm. Um, but I will say in terms of content creation for brands that maybe isn't social media related, yes. um, in that space, I think it's who you know. Mm. I think it's working with clients in the first place, even offering to do work for free, mm. and then gaining a relationship with them. They'll get you on for, for future projects, and they'll also recommend you for other yeah. people. And I think the big thing is building up your CV. Yeah. Mm. Even in a content creation space, mm. I think having previous clients that they can refer to, and that, like having even a website or a showreel of all the work you've oh, done in I the see. content creation yeah. space, yeah. to be like, here's the kind of content I create. Created. This is the way I created. This is my vibe. This is my mm. aesthetic. Yeah, These yeah, yeah. Like, here's references you can contact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I think for me the biggest way I've gotten yeah. work because mm. I've worked with quite a few clients, and that's always the biggest way I've got work is word of mouth and like your website and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, the thing and, is the tr and the tricky part about that, like you can create like good content mm. and have like really good skills, but if you don't have the numbers yeah. they want, mm. then yeah, the thing is. Um, I'm asking you guys questions. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like you guys to, <laughs> yes. okay, yeah. to, to okay, ask me a question, so but wait, first, before, yes. I, before, before I give you the chance, I'd like to ask you one last question. I okay. promise that's okay. the last question I'm going to ask you. Ne? But I'd like to uh, hear from you guys, because I was recently um, involved with a project I worked. You know, I was taking pictures for um, this uh, website design company wow. that... Um, we just make a website for a school, you know. So the guy asked me to take content for, you know, content, for example, like taking um, pictures of learners mm. at, like in the school, as well as taking headshots of like teachers to put on the website. That's you know? awesome. So what I helped the guy to do is to try to, uh, I, I was involved in the technical aspect of the whole project, which was taking pictures. And I was also involved in, um, Creating like a, creating a, what do you call, like a sales pitch, something like a sales pitch, you know, coming coming up with a way that we can actually get the school to approve us to take mm -hmm. to make the project possible. So what I did most importantly was okay, try to negotiate that the need for the project to the school. Um, I, I helped the guy do that, and he also had like, uh, cause he he called me to collaborate with him, so. One thing that, that's very important that I wanted us to do, me and this guy, was to try to come up with um, a, a very strong sales pitch that's going to get them to say yes, we want this thing. And one important thing was budget, budget, you know? Mm -hmm. So the budget, uh, we asked them the budget they um, would like, we, we just, we were like, we'll work on whatever budget you have. Yeah. And then we will make, curate like a package of what's going Within to be in budget. the website. So I want to hear from you uh, if whether you, like, how, how do you approach, like, uh, creating, like, budgets? Or do you, like, have a specific budget, like, packages that you have for um, your venture? I'm not sure if you hear my question, though. But yeah, no, for, for me, working, like, client work, mm. um, like what you're saying, um, I normally have, like, if I'm doing editing, which is what I mostly do, or if I'm filming, I have, like, a, normally a set rate, like an hourly rate. Mm. Mm. But I have for a few times, like I did something recently with community theater. So they mm. had a set budget. And mm. I didn't, I, I said to them, okay, cool, I don't really mind how much time I'm spending on this because it's also like a donation in terms 
mm. you know, because it's mm. a community theatre and it's something close to my heart. I was like, you know what, I'll accept this, even though it's a lot, not a lot less money, but it's it's less than what I normally, my rate would have been. Mm. Um, but I think also being open to that because um, you're yeah, definitely curating what you're going to, the content you're going to give them around mm. the budget. But I think also, like they were saying in the in the in the panel, is giving them more than they sometimes ask for. Mm. Mm. Um, you know, kind of giving. G- I'm trying to think of the right wording, but like, um, <laughs> what's the <laughs> word, man? Um, uh, like, <laughs> I'm trying to like my say brain. whatever comes to your <laughs> your brain. <Bleh. laughs> um, yeah, kind of just yeah, you know, plan your content around it, but I think also mm-hmm. still keep the integrity of your work and keep the quality of your work. Yeah. Mm. Um, and also, if you're willing to go under your normal budget for a specific company or school, whatever it is, mm. they can, you know, someone might see their website and be like, oh, wow, like, these are such incredible photos. Mm. Who took these? Mm. Mm. Then that's mm. word of mouth that you have. Or you can put your name, on, like, on the top of their website, for, like, photos done by. So mm. I think it's, it's constantly a give and take in the industry of, like, I'm going to give you my services, mm. sometimes mm. for cheaper than normal, but you're going to give me clients back you know mm. or at least yeah. a good word of mouth back in, in I think journey. just if you sort up then just then you have to maybe lower down your budget because mm. you're doing this for experience in life for mm. more clients mm. to see your work mm. so if you're gonna lower your budget then start with what's important mm. okay so like maybe you don't have a call or maybe you do have a call how long does it take for you to get to that certain place? How much is petrol? Yeah. That, yeah. see? Um, how much is lunch gonna cost? Exactly, mm. lunch. Mm. The basics. The basics, yeah. so if, what are you doing? What is the work? The work I'm doing? Yeah. Um, I do, okay, uh, for, for the particular question that I mm. asked you, uh, I was speaking about like projects where I work with big organizations that have mm. a big budget, you know? Okay. So, no, organizations that I don't know their budgets, you know, oh, that's you don't why, know their budgets? Yes, that's why I ask... And they don't your, disclose it. Yeah, I ask, what's your Definitely budget so often. that I can wait? You know, I, I say, what's your budget so that mm. I can work on that? But you know, as well, asking what's their budget, they're not really going to tell you what's their budget. They're going to tell you a low amount because you are. I think that giving them what your what your hourly rate <laughs> or what your daily rate yeah, yeah, yeah. is is the first is, step yeah. uh, uh. because, because asking they're gonna a budget lo- they're gonna is a first mistake yeah. 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 yeah then they'll be like oh we only have this much when they actually have that the budget that. could be yeah, 100k yeah, yeah. and they can tell you budgets at 50. yeah, yeah. So. I, I understand what you're yeah. saying but i feel like i said that we said that me and the guy because we we wanted to give back to the community mm. you know um so we want to give to give back to the community and we wanted to because it was a school i went to mm. so regardless of the budget they had we wanted to get the experience like you mm. said you know so yeah it was mainly around that you know i mm. what i do i do, do you it, know I do you know the normal like rates of being a photographer yeah i have my rates i do no 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 the yeah. other rates of other people yeah i do know them you do know yes, them yes. so maybe if you want to do it for experience and you don't want to charge that rate just then consider maybe just doing half of what mm, they mm, usually mm. do it for. Because yeah. at least then you cover transport, you cover food, yeah, exactly. and then you get a little more back for mm. like other uses. Mm. I think also yeah. it's going back and forth. Like I've done that with clients when I've been like, this is my rate. Mm. And sometimes they're like, no, we're actually gonna pay you more than that, which is always that incredible. <laughs> or they're like, okay, we actually can pay you just a bit less. And then you ca- you just kind of go back and forth with them. Mm. So you can always go in with your original rate and be like, mm. this is what I charge. Mm. And then say, but I'm up for negotiation. Mm. Mm. To an extent. Yeah, yeah. so uh, one more thing. You can ask me any question before we actually leave, you know? I don't know if you got up when I had Okay, so how do you start? <laughs> how do I start? Yeah. And what's your style of photography? That's my big question. Okay, how do I start? Uh, my friend um, was... I'm just going to keep the story short, man. Okay. My friend was a, f- hey, my friend's brother was a photographer, so he gave my friend a camera, mm. and then I saw that, and then we took a few pictures with his camera and whatever, and um, all my first year, while I was doing uh, here here at like University of the Western Cape, uh, I get funded by my Bazari and yeah. and then they give us like book allowance, which is like a lot, mm. a lot. And I wanted to make the most out of it, you know? Yeah. So I was like, I'll use this money to um, buy something that's going to return money. You, you know? turn your like investment, yeah. yeah. Exactly, you know? So I bought a camera, 
that that's how I started, you know, okay. from that book allowance. That's that amazing. So how did you get your first client? My first client. Uh, my first client. Okay, I remember I was shooting. Okay, I was doing street photography and oh, wow. street photography back where I stay. Mm. So I was just like taking pictures while I was working. Yeah. This lady saw me and then she was like, uh, "You mind coming to shoot? Like I have a party that I'm throwing, mm. and you mind coming and shoot at this event here?" And then uh, it was so interesting, and I was like, "I agreed to take the pictures, and I took the pictures. It came pretty pretty nice, you know, but." Mm. I don't feel like they were to a standard where she wanted them to be, mm-hmm. obviously because I was starting out. Yeah. And yeah, that was my first But client. I think that's important is clients yeah. knowing your 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 yeah. you know where your level's at. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. why I like having a show real or portfolio is really important. Yeah. Mm. yeah, you also ask what's my style of photography. Mm. Yeah. Well okay, can you please elaborate a bit on Like that? um okay, you said you started with street photography. Street photography. Yeah, you started with that. So, is a like, do you like color wise? What's your color approach to those? And like, uh, what's your frame uh, approach? Uh, the thing is, there are two things. Uh, I love shooting, um, okay, my style, okay. It's, it's, it's related to my niche, mm-hmm. I guess. Yeah, 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 ba- niche, yeah basically, what's yeah? your niche? Yeah. So, my niche is portraits and event photography, portraits and weddings, not weddings, portraits and events. But I love weddings, like, I started in this. Yeah. Beginning of this podcast, mm. it's getting emotional. I'm starting to get emotional, whatever, because, <laughs> <laughs> because I do love wedding photography. But it's beautiful. yeah, but yeah, it's uh, portraits and events, and I love black and white. But Stunning, yeah. yeah, but I feel like um, a lot of people that I target, particularly, don't really like that. You know, they just want pictures that are that are just there where they can just see their, themselves, which mm. is shooting in color. You know. Mm. So yeah, that's my style. What's your style? Hmm? What is my style? <laughs> Good question. What's I, your style? I'm constantly kind of um, playing around with that. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to say reinventing, but kind of reinventing it. Like for each each client that I work with or each project that I work on, I'm always taking like a different approach. Um, you know, we've been, we've been doing filmmaking for like four years, but I mm. still haven't found, I guess, my niche mm. uh, when, I, when, I, when I probably think about it. I know the style I take, Mm. in terms of like all my projects have a similar kind of look to them mm. but it also depends on who's your editor because mm. then you've yeah. got different like color it depends mm. on who's doing your lighting who's framing you know there's a lot there's a lot of factors with it but i think in general um i kind of just want to be as authentic as possible like when i'm when i'm when i'm editing especially with like color wise and, mm. and the way i'm framing it i always want it to feel very authentic and like yeah. you're actually there experiencing it as well mm. Um, that's my big thing. I, I, I have played around with very cool lighting though, and I do think it's such a, a fun art that I want to kind of get more into because I think the way lighting can change uh, the mood or something is really cool. Yeah, what about you? What's your style? Um, I kind of the same with Emily. I don't have a style, mm. and okay. also I don't really. I want to play around with everything mm. uh, in filming, right? There's not just one thing you're doing. It's uh, editing, it's yeah, camera, yeah, it's yeah, you know, it's producing and yeah, everything. Yeah. And my two favorites are editing and producing. Mm. And thank goodness she loves producing. <laughs> not a lot of people do. <laughs> so love producing. Yeah, because yeah. It's, uh, for me, <laughs> and she's good at it. It's feeding off of the business side that I crave to kind of do. Mm. So mm. yeah, I like I love those two. But then I also am interested in doing camera work. I've been scared of the camera because it's intimidating as hell. <laughs> it is. Um, but I think as soon as I buy my own, I'll mm. practice at home because I don't know. Like with editing as well, um, I learn faster because I, I, ha- I downloaded a software at home mm. and then that's how I practice a lot. Mm. So that's what I, wa- that's what I wanna do with um, camera. So as I'm saying, I don't have a style and also I don't have one thing yet I ch- I'm choosing to mm. do. I want to do everything. Yeah, 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 so yeah. I'm kind of like, kind of want to gather all the information and then be like, okay, this is my thing. Mm, mm. I agree that. I think for me, that's why I, I have such a passion for directing because mm. it's a bit of everything. Mm. You know, you're, you're deciding on mm. shots with your cinematographer. You're deciding on sound with your, your sound person. You're deciding on your lighting. Like this, mm. you mm. get a kind of say in everything, but mm. you also have people that are more experienced in that and, and run that way better than you do. Mm. And I, I respect that immensely because mm. I've, come in with like an idea for something and you have someone who's so much more experienced in like yeah. sound or lighting and mm. they give you an even better idea and you're like oh my word like mm. that's one of my favorites is kind of like working collaboratively towards yeah. that outcome yeah mm. and i think the team you're working with also like i said earlier is a huge part of what your style yeah. is mm. Mm. 
yeah, that's uh, very insightful. That's really insightful. That was yeah. so funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, I don't know if you guys have more questions or you want us to close this. Do, you know? do you have any more questions? Um, I'm going to get your Instagram off of this. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'll give you my Instagram. We always need someone on set, you know? BTS yeah, for sure, for sure. I'll <laughs> what would you say to someone who's a startup in photography? Like, mm. what are the things you need to know and uh, uh, how do you, <laughs> do you uh, know? navigate that <laughs> <Do> world? <we> <laughs> Okay, that's a good question. I, I thank thankful for that question, yeah. you know, mm. because yeah, I feel like it's a question that will speak to my younger self, you know. Mm. So I must, I must, I must, I must explain that question mm. looking directly at the camera because I want the person li watching this <laughs> or listening <laughs> this to, <is laughs> to hear what I'm about to say. Um, basically, um, people who are aspiring to be photographers or even um, filmmakers like you, mm. you know, I feel like you have to stick to one religion and by that, I mean, um, identify, make your research first before you venture into something, you know. Mm. Identify what resonates with you and your morals. Yeah. And then do that, do that thing, and do that thing for a long time, mm. you know. Do that thing for five years to 10 years. And then after that, um, I mean like, when you do something, when you're in this creative field, mm. you're going to have a lot of ups and downs. Sometimes you, you'll find like you don't, you're not getting clients mm. and you need to pay the bill. You need to, <laughs> you, know, you, need <laughs> you need to feed yourself. Mm. But, and one thing I wouldn't advise people to do when they hit that, that, you know, break that, that point where it gets tough, don't change, don't change or don't start to do something that's not aligned with, okay, that's not aligned with like photography. I would say, you got yourself into this and you got yourself knowing that it's going to be hard. So what you have to do is to um, adapt instead of pivoting, mm -hmm. adapt instead of pivoting. Mm -hmm. And by that, by that, I mean, um, you know, find a way that you can do something with your camera that is closely to what you wanted to start with. You know, it's cool to adapt, but pivoting to something entirely different. Keep your it's, integrity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, it's going to always make you to start from ground one you know mm. so yeah i mean that's my take on it i have yeah. another question i want to oh. ask you why photography why photography yeah uh okay thank you so much okay why <laughs> photography um i feel like um firstly i used to like drawing when i grew up you know mm. i drew so much but um i don't know where that passion for draw for drawing mm. went you know because I once tried to like speak, pick up a pen and try to draw whatever, but um, what happened? Okay, I pick up a camera instead of a pencil. Mm. You know? oh. So the camera was like my pencil. <laughs> mm. So uh, with that, a camera has always been a way that I express myself creatively, mm. but not forgetting to try to focus on the mandatory part of it, which is the business aspect of photography. Mm. I feel like it's very, very important and it contributes to, I feel like, 50 to like 50 to 70 mm. percent of um, what you get. Because mm. uh, if you focus, if you understand the business aspect of photograph photography, you are able to put yourself there and people can... You can't do one without that. the other. Okay. Mm. So not in this day and age. So the reason I ask you this question is because why not filming? Why? Tay, don't give us more competition. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen. Um, you said you wanted... You were drawing something, right? I what? You was you were drawing something. You yeah, started up drawing. I used to draw growing yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. And then you picked up the camera. Yes. Didn't you think, instead of like capturing a still picture, why not show what's really happening to that person in a video? Oh. Hmm. No one ever asked me that. Went like, deeper than that. No one ever asked me that. Can you please summarize it one more time? Because I feel like I, <laughs> I have think to what she's directly. saying is, yeah. why do you try capture? Why, why did you choose to capture the moment in a in a picture mm. instead of capturing that moment in a video? Mm. Oh, I, sh I like that question. <laughs> okay, okay, that's that's a really nice question. I feel like uh, okay, I'll have to think about that even more. But I'll just give you like an answer Somewhere. right now that I think I feel like it was because of. Um, and equipment that I was using mm. at that moment, you know. So I was using Canon and it was really good. And I started by using Canon, which is Canon 2000D, which is an mm. entry level camera. So um, Canon, it's good with pictures, it's very good with mm. pictures, but, but with videos, with it doesn't really do mm. a good job. So I felt like 
Um, it's just what you had like access to. Yeah, I started with photography. Uh, sort of like it was like a default choice, mm. not a direct choice that I thought of, you know. Yeah. So yeah. But you never really thought of filming. No, oh. not not like really, but yeah. But I think it's good in terms of your life for weddings because you have more higher ability, I think, as a wedding photographer than as a wedding video videographer. Oh, like one other no, thing about... No, but people do still need be wedding videos. Yeah, yeah, of course, but I feel like a lot of... Like every wedding I've been to hasn't had videos. Really? Only photographers. Uh, is it? Yeah. Oh, Which okay. is... It's interesting. I feel like it's a, it's a good space to get into. I would rather into, capture the whole I moment. Would all, I personally <laughs> would love a videographer yeah. one day, but a lot of weddings... It's Budget yeah. wise, you budget mm. a photographer, photographer. over a videographer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it depends on your target audience then, because fair enough. But what like people who have the budget uh, do want the yes, video. Yes, but if you don't have the budget, because uh, if you don't have the budget, he will always be in work. But if he's mm. doing videography, he won't be as in work. Mm. And then yeah, to end with, to but add on that, but he could have both. To, to sorry, yeah, sorry, yes, sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. To add on that, um, I I there's an association I'm part of back at home. It's called Limpopo Top Notch. Mm. So what we do, we take videos, and every time when there is like a gig that happens, we try to you know help each other up. You know, mm. um, it's a it's a, it's a photographer who's going to go there. No, I get a gig, and I know that I can't handle this thing on my own. Mm. So what I'll do is that I'll bring a videographer. And me personally, personal me personally, I uh, I like I feel like I'm very I feel like photography allows me to be as artistic as possible mm. because despite the fact that I want the money, I want to express myself arti artistically, mm. you know? And, uh, yeah, I think, yeah. I think that's the beauty of photography as well because you're capturing, with film, you have more time mm. to capture more. Mm. Where in photography, you have this one yeah. frame to capture all this emotion. Mm. Mm. And you can capture, like, uh, a moment like you can capture a moment, a moment in, in different angles you know? yes yeah. with videography you can do that but uh it's going to be different for example if i want to take you a picture let's say uh they are kissing for example yeah. i can <laughs> i can take a picture here and then go down real quick and take a picture from yeah. a different angle and go there and take a picture from that angle mm. but if you do that with videography when you shoot the video you, you must know, get focused back yeah, yeah you just have to focus it on a specific angle, you know, mm. if you shoot a video and go down and shoot like uh, from a different angle and then go there, the video is going to look horrible, I think. And no, I think you just take different takes of that video. Mm. Different takes. I think that's the thing mm. as yeah. well. Mm. But I also think it's choosing mm. a, a universal angle yeah. and kind of just playing with a that. And I think angle. as well with filming, yeah. you need like a team. But with yeah. photography. Oh, yeah, yeah. You and also so much alone. more equipment. Yeah, it's so, so much more equipment. There's this, you kind of got all the equipment sound, that unique. photographers have, mm. and then and then more, mm. and then some. Mm. I see, I see, I see. All right, okay. well, that was so much fun. Yeah, yeah, I feel like that's yeah, that was really fun. We should podcast. <laughs> Definitely, like I shot a podcast with uh, a few of my friends. You know, they are photographers. Yeah. It's cool. It's nice to have mm. a niche in yeah. photography yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, in what do you call this thing? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's always good to hear. If you know other people's aspect of definitely what it's so yeah. interesting to hear so yeah uh i'm going to upload this on my youtube channel oh. you cool with it yeah, yes cool. i'll give you my youtube you can link it <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah with that being said guys peace out peace Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was really nice that was